Hello and welcome everyone to today's video. This is Lauren from Study Clicks, and today we will be looking at 2021's higher level question two, which focuses on an experiment to determine the focal length of a concave mirror. And we are asked a number of questions along this topic here. This question is worth 40 marks in total and will approximately take you 20 minutes in the exam. So let's begin. Part one asks, why did the student first make an approximate measurement of the focal length? And this is a pinnacle point in the experiment. It is very, very crucial that you know what's going on here. So the answer to this is that we need to ensure that the object was placed outside of the focal point. This sentence will get you your six marks. Why is this? We need a real image to be formed. If we have an object inside the focal point, we would have a virtual image, which is an image we, that we can't detect on a screen. Therefore, we would not be able to find an image distance and therefore we wouldn't be able to determine the focal length of this concave mirror. Question two, another short question. How did the student determine the image positions? So that would be from the image to the back of the mirror. So we have to move the screen until the sharpest image or a sharp image was seen. And this will get you your three marks. Why am I saying sharpest image? I'm saying sharpest image because we want to get the most accurate measurement of our image distance as we possibly can. Because when the image is at its sharpest, that's exactly when the light rays are intersecting each other in order to form the image from the mirror, coming from a distance and then hitting the mirror. Question three, draw a label diagram very important that you think of a label diagram, not just a diagram, of how the apparatus was arranged. That's part three. I'll focus on that now. And this is the apparatus and the three important things here. So we're going to get one mark for correct arrangement. That's key. Now we need to identify what is our object. Our object is over here. And as you can see, I've just drawn a lamp box with cross strings. You can really do anything. I think this is standard practice in, that most people use, but you can do whatever you want, as long as you have an object there. And that will get you another mark, building up our mark slowly. Obviously, we have our concave mirror. We need to label that. And that's another mark right there. And finally, we have our screen and we have our image here. Not a very nice image or a particularly artistic one, but it's an image. And it's on a screen, which we have labeled, will give us another mark. And we have our light rays here and they're intersecting on our screen in order to get our image. Now, on the diagram in part four, we need to indicate what U and V are. And U is the object distance, what's called, and V is the image distance. Now, the object object distance is the distance from the object over here to the back of the mirror over here. So if we're going to indicate this on the diagram here, draw it in red. So that's the back of the mirror. So that would be our object distance there for U. And similarly for V, that is just the image distance from the image to the back of the mirror. And similarly, this is V. As you can see, I've drawn it from the screen to the back of the mirror. As long as you've got everything labeled correctly and everything is distinguishable, it doesn't matter if your diagram is messy as this. And for every label you get correctly in part four, so for you, you get three marks. And for V, you get three marks. Okay, so moving on to part five of this section of our question, we're asked to use all of the data, take note of that, to calculate the focal length of the mirror, which in a formula will be denoted as F. Now, the formula that I am going to use throughout this entire part of the question is going to be that of 1 over F is equal to 1 over V plus 1 over U, or vice versa. And that is the mirror and lens formula, and it can be found on page 60 of your formula and tables books under geometric optics. In this formula, we have the focal length as F, as I said earlier. U is the object distance and V is the image distance. As we showed in our diagram earlier. All we need to do now is plug in each of our values here and these two into the formula. And we will get two answers for the focal length of the mirror. And in using all of this data, we need to find the average of these two to finally come to a conclusion as to what the focal length of the mirror actually is. Okay, so starting off with U is equal to... 20 centimeters, 
and V is equal to 31.2 centimeters. I'm going to keep them in centimeters and I'll tell you why. You can do this. I know I harp on a lot about um, converting into SI units throughout all the other videos, but in this one, we don't need to because we're not converting between quantities with units. We're just going from length to length. So it just doesn't matter if you use centimeters, meters, millimeters, whatever, megameters even. You can use any of them. You don't need to convert into meters. You can if you want to you'll still get the same answer but just in meters round to side let's plug in our values and we will get our first focal length okay so i've subbed in our values and i've added the two fractions as you can see here now just for putting down the formula as we have here you get your first three marks and i should mention here in the formula we have a plus because normally well sometimes it can be a minus sign depending on what scenario we're into but the scenario is as follows we have a real image therefore we have plus one over the image distance and we get one over f is equal to this fraction over here so now we're just going to flip it to get what f is and i'm going to put this into our calculator because it's a bit of a nasty fraction and that's equal to 12.1875 centimeters approximating it to 12.19 centimeters remember we are working in centimeters here and i'm just going to do the same for the other value and we get f is equal to 12.03 centimeters okay so you, how do we find the final focal length in using all of the data well we take the average so we have the sum of individual focal lengths over the number of individual focal lengths will be equal to the total focal length so f is equal to 12.19 centimeters i'm going to keep our units in here plus 12.03 centimeters over two so let's put this into our calculator to get our final version of f okay so we have 12.19 plus 12.03 over 2 that's equal to 12.11 remembering always have our centimeters in and that will get you a final three marks if you forget to find the average you'll be docked minus one mark but we didn't do that here so we get our full marks okay so in the very final part of this question, we're told that another student carried out the same experiment, but measured the image distance V for each of six different object distances U. So she measured V and U in the formula, which we have been working with throughout this whole question. And she used that graph to calculate the focal length. And we're asked a couple of questions on this. Before we dive into answering the actual questions, I just want to mark your attention to the following page in the formula and tables book i.e page 18 in which we will look at the equation of a line formula so we're asked in part six to sketch a suitable graph notice the word sketch we don't need to explicitly have very detailed axes or anything like that just a rough shape of the graph and what variables we'd put on each axis and so forth that might have been drawn so there are two ways you can do this and you'll get two different curves out but both have to do with the formula but the first one that i'm going to be working with it's more conventional and i'm going to be working with the formula one over v plus one over u is equal to one over f i the same formula that we've been working with throughout this entire question and i would like to get it into the form y is equal to m x plus c i.e the equation of the line formula now we will need to calculate the focal length, which is F, and this student measured U in order to get out V. So in science in general, if we're ever drawing a graph, you always put the independent variable on the x-axis. They're your x labels. Independent variables would be variables in which you, that they control the other parameters in the experiment. The other parameter being the dependent variables, in this case, our independent variable will be u because the value of v or the image distance is dependent on the value of u. This kind of u part of the formula will be our x value and I'm going to have on our y axis 1 over v and the units I'm going to put in it's going to be length to the minus 1 because the image distance is on the denominator of the fraction so therefore so is the unit. So 1 over v is going to be y, and if we manipulate this formula, we bring 1 over u to the right-hand side, which is just going to be minus 1 over u. 
obviously plus the 1 over f. Now 1 over u will be on our x-axis again with the same units and we have successfully put this formula up here into the equation of a line formula. m as we know is the slope and it's going to be a downward slope because it's a minus sign. So we're going to have a slope of minus 1. So the graph is going to look something like this. And I would explicitly state in the exam and in your work booklet that m is in fact equal to minus 1. And also that it does cross the y-axis or the 1 over v-axis. And that will be at the y-intercept point, i.e. c which you can clearly notice is 1 over f. And that will come in pretty handy in the next part of this question. Where will I get my marks? I'll get my marks for correctly having the axes as 1 over v and 1 over u. Again, you can switch the axes with these. 1 over u can be on the y-axis and 1 over v can be on the x-axis, but this is just scientific convention with the independent variables and the dependent variables. And also having the graph linear and at a downward slope of minus one, you get your next three marks. Now I did mention that there is another way you can answer this question. So I have my graph axes here again, and next we have our values of u, and they will give us corresponding values of v. So let's draw a graph, which is equally valid, of v versus u. Because using the same formula, i.e. 1 over u plus 1 over v is equal to 1 over f. And since u is the independent variable and v is the dependent variable, we're going to manipulate this formula over here in order to get v, the dependent variable, in terms of u. So just like in maths, when you're getting y as, as a function of x, we're going to get v as a function of u. Because for every value of u, it's going to generate a certain value of v. And this is the one that makes physically sense. So bringing all of our unwanted variables to one side and we just want to get v on its own so we can express v in terms of u and f as well but 1 over f or f in this case is a constant it's the focal length of the mirror it doesn't change and if you get the right hand side over here as a fraction to just get v i'm going to say v in terms of u and this is just equivalently as saying like you know to put a little addendum here um you know in maths you have y is equal to some function f of x this is exactly the same as what i'm doing up here so v of u that's just equal to the flipped version of what we have above here because we're flipping both sides. So this is the formula we use for the graph. Okay, so it's clearly not a linear graph at all. So we can clearly see that v is a function of u. This isn't a linear graph. And we can draw the conclusion that this graph will never hit either the u or the v axis because it will never go to zero. V will never be at zero, and U will never be at zero. So we're going to get some sort of curve. Just to get some marks, we're going to put U, and that's, I'm going to put in meters, and we're going to put V in meters as well. And also for continuity as well, and just to so we're smoothen this out, you can also write U as a function of V, right? And this is just going to equal practically the same thing. Now, you can see in both cases for u is a function of v and v is a function of u that as v and u get very, very close or near to the value of the focal length, i.e. f, that the denominator will go to zero. And if the denominator goes to zero, the graph, this whole function here and over here, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's going to go to infinity. So what we say in maths is that as u comes more in line with the focal point f, so say the focal point of f is here on the u-axis and the focal point, because f is also um, measured in units of length, that it cuts these axes here and here. As v gets very, very close to f, u is going to go off to infinity, right? So the graph itself, it's going to asymptote at this value of f in both cases. And this happens when u also gets very, very close to the value of f. So what we're going to do is it's going to get really, really large all the way up here, but it's never actually going to reach f because otherwise this would be zero and you can't divide through by zero in maths. 
So what you're going to happen is it's going to asymptote like that. And it's going to approach this value of f, but it's never actually going to reach it. And you're going to get a curve like this. Another way to try and get this curve instead of to reason it out as I did here, you can put all of this into your calculator. And what I mean by that is... If you go into setup, you can get f as a function of x. And if you say pick a length for focal length, say I'm going to say 10. And let's say x is u and f of x is v. So we're going to have 10x and that's over u minus f. And you can pick, um, I would go for values above the focal point. And you can roughly map out a table and you can roughly map out values and you'll be able to map a graph of similar shape instead of analyzing functions and stuff like this. But again, like for the other example, three marks for each axis and another three marks for the curve. It doesn't explicitly say in the marking scheme that you need the units on the axes, but I'd always put them on just as a habit. Now, that was a bit of a woof of a question, but going on to part seven, we're asked, how could this graph be used to calculate the focal length. Okay, so in the first scenario, it's actually quite nice because again, remember we had the formula y is equal to mx plus c and I told you we'd be coming back to this. c, as you know, is the y-intercept. So in the linear graph that we had or the first graph that I drew um, in part six, we had that c is equal to one over f. So where the graph cuts the one over v axis is going to be exactly one over f. So here where this linear graph cuts the y-axis Axis or the 1 over v axis, it's going to be 1 over f. And that's how you would calculate the focal length for this graph. And then you'd get three marks for obviously stating this and three marks for actually, you know, finding it and explaining it and show all your thought processes here. However, there is another way in which you can use the graph to calculate the focal length. And it includes both the first and the second graph that I drew. And the second way that you can calculate the focal length is to substitute any point on the best fit line or the curve. So for the graph one over V and one over U, your X and Y points will equal these values. So your X value would be one over V and your Y value would be one over U. And it's very important to explicitly state that. And also, for the graph v versus u your x and y value points will be in reference to u and v that will be the tuple that you'll be looking at and you're to substitute them into this original formula here so saying that you substitute from the best fit line or the curve it's your three mark and the other three marks go for the formula itself make sure to really explain yourself though as you are going through this final part of the question